Okay, mala zata pan sige mo na bini. Subukan i programan mo na sa gupa. Zata na all of my state siluta. Over Governor Juan Nekay Babauta i Mariana sa gupa cultural show. Paluno din na posisible sti na i Northern Mariana Humanity Council at desti na pundo makatumagi ni i National Endowment for the Arts. Dong kululu na sa dulo para i Northern Mariana Humanities i pundo na ini na posisible sti. Ginin i nendon kulturan na tibu. Kung mabisa lopi si si Dolo Cabrera, Presidente, Project Director si Dr. Rehebe, na i-fumunmay si panatapon adingan dyan si former governor. Juan Nekay Babauta, Puriledlo, itinigay niya siya, historian i gubernamen Tota, giginin i-lininay niya, kung ha experience si personalmente kung mabisa, Ihagas mag-alohi winigisang katan na Islas Marianas. Uh, uno na libro yes, yung Tiatubi uh, ang taatang tati ipinaposta istorya ka. Na iparaw atani kumugwisa lo kwi umatan i gubernamen tota para tulusig winigisang katan na Islas Marianas. Tapos may la, sa artisa di tapang sige mo na bini, tanoy daong kulunin na sa dudo. Governor, kundi pinatungo pa ako na Sabalo. May parata panghita o matingani. Imanong tauta na isi niya un share si siya loke. Tinigye mo. Diyan hapay na kumikiling niya antes na tempo, pago na tempo. Diyan uho namon iman mamamayla na hinirasyon. Tay mano na isi niya hausa si siya na liblo. Itinigye mo pa ako. Pagkakas. Itinigay mo, Papa, para katso muna o sino, o guardia muna hinanaw ka para muna este. Tapos na lang, sabi na ay watu si Dr. Juan Babauta. Talo, buenas, para hawag mo sino. Tapos sige mo na. Si Diyos mo si Glenn. Si Diyos mo si ni kung kubida siya para may pagtiginig i programan ni Dr. Cultural program ni mga pagpaso ni Humanity Sponsor. Pag-ibso, para ba yung gaya yung pag-unokan? Para ba yung sa mga lodo mo skutis di doos na lablo ni Utugi, is nagiprin na i-prevent na lablo is dyan na tayo in retrospect. Wagi ni mo kalang sak tayo mo kalang para o fangasyas di 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 The quotation belongs to the United States, but it's not part of the United States in quotation. This was a case from the insular cases out of the case called Downs versus Bigwell out of Puerto Rico. The second one is the blue. This is the timeline, which was an offshoot of the first book. Well, of course, partner again to move to the blue sea, Frank Sebulaski, and to not like a few of our new ones in the coast. The Northern Man Island and the American family, a historical timeline. More like a scenario of blue for our research. Then you got to be high school, or you know, got to be Korea. More like a little blue for our separate reference, quick reference, and then you do your research year after. The Muna Tres also a offshoot of the second book. Again, no Chesumami students, Frank Sebulaski, who go to Langmus in information, who is in the blue, who is in the focus of the NMI history timeline on submerged lands and territorial waters and the exclusive economic zone. Basically, lay out the history the development of the, the, the submerged lands and the territorial waters uh, in the history to a man in, in America to the, the, the lawsuits in the uh, society was uh, uh, fast forward. He was Congress in 1974, uh, passed no, no lie. The Hanoi, the 
the uh, uh, the territory such as Guam, Mercosur, Juniano rights to the submerged lands. So, the Malungi is in my set of the Mangkakamuwo fit Because later on, it's in a Malung, maybe a lie. The Manasona Malungi in Northern Marianas, the Aboriginal lie. It's in a later on, no Manmanahi protect it, but the control is of the submerged lands. All right. No, ano yung tugis si Fernanda na na lablo una guha book signing the Jotan Kizil Library, Muslim Radio, newspaper, malak eskwelazo, una guha book signing, ano ano sa ulo di di Muslim Brothers College. Book signing of the Greek. The sister, he must, he must frequently ask questions. No, 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 Well, through the movie, the blue parogolo, put it on in our movie, I guess the whole author. And what was the hardest part uh, in writing the book? These were the most frequently asked questions. So, then, if you don't mind, no, I just kind of read off. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Papa, no, go ahead. Yeah, why did you write the book? Okay. You know, so, uh, I said, I have always wanted to write a book. I, I wanted to capture at least a fraction of my experience, both as a private citizen and my time. In public service, uh, more 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 importantly, I wanted to record a piece of NMI history as I saw it and experienced it. Otherwise, that particular perspective would have been lost for good. Uh, it is my hope that the book contains information uh, uh, future generations would appreciate and treasure. I wrote the book with uh, students of history in mind. To use as a resource and to benefit from it. Uh, if this is accomplished, even at the smallest bit, the cost would have been advanced. So, the second question is how long did you write the book? It took me a year and a half uh, to, to, you know, to spend the whole day in you know, the you know, mm -hmm. Actually, the time you spend on the book is many. To get a blue piece by piece, you know, stayed up until two, three, four o'clock in the morning. So it took me a year and a half, but I only worked on it at night, and then about two, three hours at a time. Most of the time was spent in research and to make sure that my information is as accurate as possible. Because. Did you write the book yourself? Well, the answer is yes. I wrote the entire book myself. Uh, all my notes were handwritten before typing them up on, on, on my laptop. On my laptop, I had some. Uh, I had someone review and edit my transcript. You know, it's it's it's, it's almost a must that uh, any writer could do that and should do that. And in order to format and final uh, draft uh, for printing, I did some editing, but it is not enough. To edit your own work. In most cases, it is not recommended. Thus, it was wise for uh, to have a third party review your work, which was the case in retrospect. In when I addressed the question was uh, was what was the hardest part in writing the book? Was to keep up again, and you know, my wife uh, Charlene insisted that I keep my writing simple. And to the point. What did never told you beside me? She she also insisted on the logical and consistent flow of the subject matter, which is very important. You know, once you start reading a book and the the to majuki flow in thinking, majingwastay reader. She was right on both points because I tend to mix in different things in a paragraph. You know, when you're talking about two different things in one sentence, 
you, you just lost your, your reader uh, with no sense of order. But then I would go back and sort them out. When I come up with a, a, an, a, an idea, I would write it down. Even when I am doing something else completely, <clears throat> completely different, I, I did it even when I was out jogging. You know, so, uh, Inspiration. Inspiration. Uh, I would stop and write down that idea and, and I would do it quickly before I get uh, before I forget it. Uh, the more difficult part was doing the research and uh, to be able to do that. The research really is the backbone of the book. So, uh, the video accurate information. The video who Dinanchi put in Lucian and Lucian and Toto, but in the idea that we put quote, but in Chilean idea, she got on my credit to. This is Sukisha, the video precise, the Mungana who latches the discretion of a question in the integrity in the book. Though we must be important is that I wanted to capture a piece of anime history. Uh, in the way that I saw it when I was in public service, yeah. and I wanted that piece of history to be as accurate as possible from from the standpoint of, of me as a person and, and and the person that was involved in in a lot of these uh, uh, decisions and as as a senator, and I was uh, Washington representative and and then uh, serving as governor. I'm also going back when I was. Uh, on the Board of Education, I was chairman of the Board of Regents for you know, uh, a number of years and guided the uh, development of the, uh, the college. So there's a lot of history here about the development of the Northern Rhinos College, a uh, lot of history about the development of the uh, Commonwealth Health Center. So in, in retrospect, this is even another look. Uh, let me just kind of go through some of the content. Can I can I hold that up the the, the, the right. book so I can? Okay, this is in retrospect, all right. Uh, Governor, before you continue on, where can people get the copy on this in retrospect? You know, it it, it used to be on the bestseller uh, at bestseller where you can buy it, but I, I'm not sure if they still have copies. Okay. Uh, or you can just call me up personally, uh, and and I would. Uh, uh, Make sure that we hook up and uh, okay. get, get a copy. Get okay. a copy. So, all right. So that's uh, the information update. Uh, bestseller, or uh, give him a call, and maybe we'll, we'll get the information with, uh, and we'll put it up on the screen. All right. Yeah. Continue on. Good information is the content. Basically, it goes back when I was a health planner. Uh, I took a part. Uh, I took part in in the uh, planning uh, and the construction uh, up to the construction of of the Commonwealth Health Center. Is mm -hmm. uh, That was uh, when I uh, came out of uh, public service. The, the university. Uh, East, um, oh, sorry, okay. Uh, okay. University of Cincinnati. Okay. Uh, to get into the second master's in the public health. Uh, I wrote uh, my experience on the Board of Education and the Board of Regions uh, uh, when I was a senator, when I was Washington rep, and when I was governor. Uh, the book also contains issues here about the environmental health issues. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an extensive chapter on the PCB contamination in Tamapak, uh, Tamapak Village in, in Saipan. Uh, I wrote about the Navajo uh, coal tokers. They they had a piece of history here in, in the cinema during uh, World War II, and uh, the American Memorial Park uh, uh, was something that I also worked on. Of course, it got started early on with different administration, but uh, towards the end, um, I was heavily involved in it. It's also, but uh, uh, forward a little bit when I was Washington rep, it was the our office, uh, the Washington office that, that developed and uh, came up with all the names at the Court of Honor. Mm -hmm. uh, those names did not come from, from the uh, Department of Interior. 
It did not come from, from the military. It did, you know, we actually did the research. And the reason why we did that uh, was that we uh, asked for the names of the fallen mm. uh, family members. members. No, we, we actually asked the, uh, our office asked the, uh, the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. We went to the Naval Ar Archives. We uh, uh, told them check the, especially the uh, Department of Interior, you know, oh, we, we have no idea. Uh, go, go and ask the uh, Department of Defense. We, we asked several departments of the uh, of the Department of Defense, under the Numero Gaidu information. So what we did was mm -hmm. we went and and took out all the information in boxes mm -hmm. out of the uh, uh, naval uh, archives in Washington. So the names of the Court of Honor was uh, later on was verified. We sent the booklet to the uh, Department of Defense and we sent it to the National Archives and we sent it to uh, different branches of, of the services, uh, especially those organizations that were uh, part of uh, the war. Because there's still a lot of organizations in the states that that uh, are still uh, getting together and and, and you know for camaraderie uh, uh, reasons or whatever. So they they you know the, the book is organization called uh, uh, Leatherhead. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So so those are organizations that took part in verifying the information. So we actually gave it to the Secretary of, of the Army, the, the uh, Defense Secretary, the uh, Office of uh, Naval Archives, a copy of the booklet that we, we uh, developed and, and, and you know, with all the names. We gave it to the Department of Interior. Long story short, the Department of Interior then gave it to the uh, uh, what is his name? Am Ambassador Hayden Williams, who was who was cuddling the American Book Memorial Park as his baby. So mm -hmm. they they used the the booklet that came from the Department of Interior was our booklet, and they gave it to the American Memorial Park to have those names put up. See, it's in our story. Yung sasangan, do ane gumubid mo, binik inig ma but at least ane Washington Bethel. Yeah, no. The Azusia is man manajuda is We only researched the uh, the military. Oh, the, okay. the, 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 the So we only did the research at the China and document to in the National Archives in the Washington DC. So we we spent uh, uh, about six months, almost uh, eight months in the uh, Nistina research, and, and nobody else in Washington, D.C. could verify whether whether the names were actually correct or incorrect, but uh, it was the, our information was based from uh, documents that we retrieved from the National Archives. Yes, retrospect. Yes, we did the uh, uh, appointments to the military academy. Uh, before any any Bogumalum to us was to we didn't couldn't make appointments, so we went and, and had a, 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 the law amended. So as was to rep, I was able to appoint uh, uh, our students to the military academy. Candidates. We, you know, you can read about the garment industry, the immigration, um, the. Uh, uh, Issues about the minimum wage, how it, it, you know, the history of it, uh, labor issues, and then we also did the uh, in the book you can read about the, Mar the Marianas Marine Scouts. Mm, okay. I don't know if you remember, mm -hmm. or Glenn, yeah. the Marianas uh, Marine Scouts. Uh, about fifty-five of our uh, men were were uh, uh, scout re recruited, recruited, a scout recruited by the the Marines, mm -hmm. and they got trained. And, and their purpose was to help the Marines, the U.S. Marines, uh, kind of flush out the Japanese that were still in hiding 
they went up to the Northern Islands, they went you know, up to Morphe and, and, and elsewhere, uh, because it was our guys, our men, that knew where all these hiding places yeah. were. Knew the caves. Yeah, Buddha caves, yeah. Uh, we worked on the uh, veteran cemetery. Uh, it was Washington Rep, uh, to, uh, you know, that $1.5 million to, to, uh, for, for the development, the planning of it and all that. And that's how it, it came about. Uh, we actually, when I got in as governor, we, we completed the veteran cemetery. It was also being worked on by previous governors, and, and they also worked hard on it. Contributed, no? Contributed, yes, yes, absolutely. Right. Uh, I don't know if you remember in the book also, you can read uh, about astronaut uh, Chiaki Mukai, mm -hmm. you know, one of the astronauts that went up to uh, uh, the space lab with uh, uh, Senator John Glenn. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, senator John Glenn was then a, a U.S. senator, and, and he had previously flown in different missions, and, and so as senator, they went up and, and, and part of the uh, Chiaki, Mackay's, uh, and, and Senator Glenn's uh, mission was to do research on the aging process of the human body. Mm -hmm. so, uh, <laughs> uh, the Voice of America relay station in Kenya. Uh, was also something that, yeah, we brought that in and, and worked a hard uh, with the contractor. And is and that in I'm, the book? Yes, all oh, right. Okay. And uh, the, the uh, Bill Gates uh, Millennium Scholarship mm -hmm. when Bill Gates rolled up his, his uh, 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 scholarship program, the, the NMI was not included. Mm -hmm. So we actually immediately contacted the, the Bill Gates Foundation. And, and asked, I said, was, was this a, a, a deliberate omission of the Northern Marianas Islands, or was just it was a, an oversight? Mm -hmm. And so they wrote back and said, well, uh, thank you for bringing it up. It was an oversight. We'll include the, the Northern Marianas. That's why a lot of the students today are getting, are, are getting the, uh, the Gage Millennium uh, Scholarship. Scholarship. Okay. We also, in the book, you can read about the adult correction of facility to jail. It was mm -hmm. because when they, got in as governor, uh, there was no funding, and, and so we had to find funding and, 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 and completed the uh, uh, correction of Silicon. One interesting piece of history, which really a lot of people don't know, is that the, the Iraq, the Iraqi defector. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I was governor... Uh, you accepted the... No. Oh, okay. No. okay. Uh, I was sitting in my office and uh, an appointment was made uh, for me to be visited by a number of high-ranking officials from the CIA, mm -hmm. which I said, well, I didn't do anything wrong, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and you're not under investigation. Uh, I, I, it, it, it was puzzling because it was just a, a uh, an appointment for me to see some this high ranking CIA. Oh, so, okay. CIA. Central Intelligence Agency. Central Intelligence Agency. So the, it's not an uh, investigative arm of the federal government. It's no, just, no. It's like no. a spy. No, no, it wasn't the FBI. Or okay. the, it was the CIA. Okay. So spy. the CIA uh, wanted to see me. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh my God, uh, what's going on? Mm -hmm. uh, so the next day they came. Uh, one came into my office, two, three, four, there was a, and then there was a, at least 10. Wow. And so we had to go to the conference room, sat down, and uh, very um, uh, quietly and, and smoothly as, oh, okay. as possible, they, they uh, told me that uh, well, he, the, the lead uh, guy out of uh, Langley, Virginia, their quarters, Said uh, Governor, we have a, we have a guest, and we wanted to let you know that this uh, guest of ours uh, is a defector from Iraq. He defected from the uh, Iraqi regime because uh, he feared uh, for his life, and that uh, he was uh, part of a scientist, a group of scientists in Iraq uh, that was uh, developing the. Uh, weapons of mass destruction, mm -hmm. and they threatened uh, his family. In fact, his family were all, all killed, and, but this guy uh, managed to, to flee from Iraq 
uh, to, uh, I think he was picked up in, in Cambodia, mm. and then the CIA, uh, I mean, CIA picked him up in, in Cambodia, and they flew him to somewhere, and they were trying to decide where to process this guy. Mm. And they talked about bringing him to uh, Canada, to, to the US, but the, they ruled the US because for, I don't know for what reason they, they thought about Guam. And finally, he ended up here in cinema. And so, he, you know, the, the, this, a lot of the CIA agents were from out of Langley and, and, and then the offices out of uh, uh, Los Angeles and, and also out of Hawaii. So they were all here. Mm -hmm. And they told me that they, this guest uh, is to be is going to be here for you know a couple of weeks. Uh, they're gonna process him and then they will take him to where uh, they they will take him. So um, those are the experiences uh, that you've gone through. Yeah. So so this was all done in secrecy because I wasn't supposed to be divulging this information. I, I they asked me to not say anything to anybody. And, uh, um, but in my book, I said, you know, after this so many years, I said, what the heck, I I'm gonna write about it. <laughs> and uh, so, the war is over. So, so this, so after two weeks, uh, this, the, a, a, every week the, C the CIA, the same people, in fact, some of them were being rotated back uh, in and out from different offices. and. After two weeks, I asked the, the CIA, I said, uh, the lead guy, I said, is our guest um, still here? He says, yes, uh, owner, we, we're still processing. Did you manage to see him, I guess? I'm, I'm leading up to oh, that, okay. you know, so, okay. I, I, and then he said, yes, uh, owner, we, uh, uh, we're still processing him. I said, uh, oh, it's been two weeks. He said, well, you know, a lot of things have come up. Another week they uh, passed by, they came in just to brief me to let me know that he's still here. I didn't know where he was staying. I, nobody knew except for, for these guys and uh, the, the CIA uh, uh, officials. And so uh, when they came the third time, I said, you know, listen, uh, we have a guest here on island and I know, you know, it's kind of a, a top secret thing, but uh, uh, I like to meet this guest, you know, this this is our island and I mean, yeah. I'm the I'm the sitting governor and I wanna I wanna meet this guest of ours. And uh, they were they looked at each other and they didn't know what to say. And I, I said, Well, um, I just wanna say hi to him. <laughs> and, um, so it it was almost over a month before he was finally processed and, and ready to go. And when when it was ready for for this guy to be taken out of uh, Saipan, the CIA called me up. They they have my phone number. They have everything about me. It's like amazing, right? So they called me up and says, Governor, uh, in in two three hours, it was in the middle of the night. Uh, uh, our guest is going to depart, and we'd like to invite you up to the airport. And we're going to pick you up, and uh, we'll bring you up, and and. Uh, uh, he'll be coming up uh, in a car uh, as soon as you get there and you, you get to see him and shake hands with him and, and um, uh, it will be gone and <laughs> you know uh, we're gonna take him out of Saipan <laughs> and we're done with him <coughs> so sure enough I went up to the airport they drove me up to the airport and uh, <coughs> uh, within five minutes uh, he was being brought up to the tarmac mm -hmm. there was a C1 airplane on the on the tarmac and I could not believe the entire airport was covered with uh, uh, the, the U.S. Air Force Army, uh, I don't know, uh, U.S. Rangers. Uh, secured. The place secured is with, with submachine guns, and there were two, uh, and there were two uh, jet fighters uh, uh, on the runway uh, to escort this guy. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it was like out of a James Bond movie. <laughs> it was so, uh, and, and so I, um, uh, the guy pulled up, he got out of the car, and he walked towards me, and I walked, I walked towards him, and I shook hands with him, and I said, uh, you know, uh, welcome to, I know you're leaving now, but uh, welcome to Saipan, I hope you, 
you enjoyed your stay here in Saipan? Uh, and his response in broken English says, I love, I love your island. Very safe. Very safe. <laughs> I was thinking, well, you know, if you're guarded by a whole bunch of CIAs, it's sort of likely you must be very safe. So, but anyway, he, he's a, a short guy. Uh, but he's a scientist. Slim. Uh, according to the information uh, from the CIA agents, he was uh, uh, he, he part, took in uh, the, the development of mass, mass destruction. destruction. Yeah. So, okay. so his life was in uh, was threatening, mm -hmm. and, and uh, so he had to. Uh, and this is while well, you're a governor. When I when I was uh, when I was governor. So, so these are things that uh, you know happened. Uh, then, then we formed the first uh, Western Micronesian Chief Executive, uh, and then you remember in the book also we I have a piece here on the visit of the Emperor and the Empress mm -hmm. of Japan. Is that the first time we ever got visited by an emperor? Of Japan? Yeah, it was, it was first very, time while you're the governor. Yes, the very first. We have time. never been visited in the past. As far as I know, okay. we've never been visited. Yeah, yeah. Hirohito, uh, no? Uh, Emperor Akihito. Akihito. And, uh, and the Empress was Michiko. Uh, Empress Michiko. And, and uh, I think that, that year was uh, 2005? 2005. Yeah. Okay. That's the last year that you served as governor. Yes, no? yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was, it was really an amazing experience. Uh, and I, I got to sit between. The emperor and the empress at the luncheon, and the emperor wasn't really uh, in the book. Uh, uh, the, his English was not is, is not that good, so it was hard for me to communicate and to have a conversation with him. So I turned to the empress, and the she empress knows. she her English was very good, yeah. and she was translating to him ah. back and forth, uh, you know, uh, over lunch. So that was quite an experience, and uh, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, is it, uh, we also dealt with the, uh, uh, well, we completed the Tinian High School, uh, construction of the, the high school. Uh, we dealt with the stateless persons, you know, remember the stateless, uh, the about 26, 28 um, uh, Filipino nationals that were uh, born here. Uh, just before the declaration of the uh, uh, conferring of the citizenship status in 1986 by President uh, Ronald Reagan. Uh, so we dealt with that. We actually uh, filed a lawsuit against uh, the State Department. We went to the district court and, and we lost the case. Mm. Uh, we went to the Ninth Circuit, the Ninth Circuit reversed uh, the district court and won the case. And finally, we, we had uh, those stateless uh, individuals now uh, given U.S. passports. So, so those are the things that uh, uh, that you can uh, find, you can in, find in, the, uh, in, in, the, in retrospect. In no? retrospect. Uh, let me ask you this, uh, Governor, uh, what uh, we can you know, speak in both English yeah. and Chaboro, right? Uh, but the garment industry, you're you're still the governor when the the last couple of uh, garment factories were still operating, no? Yes. And uh, what what do you think uh, is the main cost of uh, this garment industry or garment factories moving to Vietnam? Uh, is it because of the labor? Uh, issue uh, more cheaper to produce in Vietnam, and uh, well, there there are a number of things that led up to it, and and, uh, and why didn't our, our government fight for to have this industry continue on here? So it's a two prong uh, question. <laughs> yeah, you know, first of all, mm. there have been a lot of issues with labor, mm. uh, <clears throat> immigration status, and then. Uh, Labor issues. There were some. Not not all of the labor laws applies here, but there are some aspects of it that do apply. And we have been violating all those. You know, the garment industry, especially, uh, were violating those, and that's why 
the uh, U.S. labor so inspe you know, uh, inspectors were here. That's why Congress got involved. And, and we worked uh, for many years to try and correct those okay. issues. And so it has a history of violations. Uh, and then actually the, the, the whole thing was when, when President Bill Clinton was president and, and worked with the uh, World Trade Organization. And what, they, what he did, President Clinton, was that he, he uh, renegotiated the, the quota on, on Garmin going into the, the, the US. And as you know, when the Garmin issue was here, there was no quota uh, of uh, Garmin going into the US. That's why we were, the Garmin industry here was- There's an advantage, to, no? To, yeah, to total, people. total advantage. They yeah. were able to export uh, volumes and volumes of Garmin into the US market. But when, when Clinton agreed to the world uh, organization, they imposed the quota. They, they took away the quota from the seed mine. So it, it, it turned out it that- It levels the playing field. It levels the yeah. playing field and we were no longer, we no longer had that advantage mm -hmm. and it essentially kind of uh, led to the demise of the of this industry. Yeah. But that was, that was really- So we, we don't have any chance of actually maintaining a, a specialty type of uh, garment industry like making uh, leather goods, uh, shoes, <clears throat> we cannot get into that, or can we still get into we, that now? We in can, your but, opinion? but but now that, that we don't control immigration, we don't bring in uh, the, the, another the, obstacle. The labor right? is big. right now. You cannot find anybody out there to do yard work for less than twelve dollars an hour. Very expensive. So it, it's it's just really uh, out of reach right now for any for any kind of industry like that. Okay, uh, I don't know if you touch in your book, but in your opinion, ko no i presente na a reglamento pa ako i relasyon tanda ni ni federal in terms of the labor no hiring of non-resident uh, is it better or better off now or we are better off when we control our own borders? In your honest opinion. In terms of the economy, and you know, is are we better off having the U.S. no control the border, the incoming of labor, or are we better if we were to continue uh, managing our border and immigration and labor? Then, um, I would have, I would have preferred that we continue control of immigration ourselves. Ourselves. Oh, okay. We. That, that's my personal preference, okay? There were a lot of issues that were involved in the immigration issues, labor and all that. And I have played a, a role in trying to make sure that we do the right thing, that we follow the labor laws that were applied here so that we stave off any attempt by you, the US Congress to take immigration over, to federalize immigration. You know, because we, uh, we, would, we would be able to I would you know, love to bring in uh, labor uh, supplies that, that uh, we need for, for construction and whatever else. We don't have that. Uh, but, but, but we also played a role in, in, in abusing that privilege. And that's why there were a lot of issues involved. And, and so, uh, uh, you know, it took time for us to kind of learn uh, how to control ourselves yeah. over this huge privilege that we have uh, in, in the covenant. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so with all the issues that were involved, the, the labor uh, violations and all that, it, you know, the Congress said it was time for, for uh, the federalization of the immigration and also the, the minimum wage. Um, I don't believe in artificially increasing uh, wages. I think the wages ought to be uh, based on market demand on, on, the, on the market. It's a, it's a supply and demand. demand. Okay. But uh, when you unnecessarily, uh, you know, we had our own minimum wage in addition to the federal minimum wage, 
and in, in some areas, but uh, uh, inflating the, the minimum wage unnecessarily. Uh, you know, this is a small community, and, and uh, uh, if we were able to bring in labor from to the Philippines, especially you know, mainly, uh, we we could still be uh, uh, suppressing the exorbitant uh, amount of uh, labor now. You cannot find anybody here on island right now to, to do your work for less than twelve dollars an hour. Okay, uh, we're getting closer to the Q and A. Uh, we're about fifteen minutes uh, away from closing this section. Para tulo si Maniku, simpleng tababay telephone. Naisinya loki mansaone manatota man mamaising question kung ito ta special guest pa mo. Former Governor Juan Nikay Babauta kung ilibro niya tugi. I storyota ay finakusta ginin i linee niya i ane hagun atan tati istigit din na na tinigi yatugi in retrospect yata translada ni tapapa na translada ane hagun un atan tati na ni siya tugi papa lo lo sa pia tababay telephone gis six seven zero two three four five nine two nine okay Pus na radio lamzo, governor uap orang. Yeah, just you know, then if I may just add, I I really like to to make this point about our general relationship with the U.S. Okay, and and this has to do with the covenant. Okay, I just want to say that that the covenant is not a perfect document. We do not have a perfect relationship with the U.S. But it is the best that under the circumstances mm -hmm. that we've best, got. Best. Okay. And, and I commend our founding fathers, mm -hmm. fathers, Ed Pangilinan, who is the chairman of the Morales Political Status Commission, is still around. I spent a lot of time with him. In fact, I talked to him a lot when, when I was writing the book. How about the former uh, Lieutenant Governor Pete? Yes, yes, yes. I, you know, mm -hmm. I, I see him uh, often, and I will always talk about this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the NMI, the NMI, uh, could have chosen uh, independence, like Palau or, or the FSM, the Marshals. Uh, uh, instead, we also we we, uh, we decided that we want to negotiate with the U.S. directly. Very quickly, I just want to uh, note this. Okay, uh, talking about political status and, and how we get. Okay. Uh, uh, the reason why we got to the point where we wanted to go to negotiate with the U.S. was three times we had a plebiscite, and we wanted to, to have reunification with Guam. Mm. So we, the, first, the first plebiscite that we had here in Saipan was in February, on February 1961, and the majority of the people of the CNMI wanted to unite mm. To have this uh, unification with Guam. Mm -hmm. Guam had their own plebiscite and they said, no, we don't want this relationship. <laughs> okay? So the second <coughs> time was October 1963. We had a plebiscite here. The, the same thing. The, the Marianas wanted to unify with Guam. Guam had their own plebiscite. They said, no, the second time. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then, the third was in on November 1969. We another we had another plebiscite here, and majority of the people of CNMI, uh, 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 Marianas, said said yes, we wanted to unify Guam. For the third time, Guam said no. Wow. Yes. And, and and so you know, after after Guam saying no for the third time, the NMI dropped the whole idea of unification with Guam, and we decided. That we uh, want, and instead uh, we we supported direct political uh, affiliation with the U, with the U.S. So it was a blessing in disguise, you know. Mm -hmm. The turning down by Guam three times was a blessing in disguise. It led us to uh, negotiating with the U.S. directly for for a a new political status. It enlightens our founding fathers. Yeah, you know, he said, "Well, you know, three three times is a strikeout, right?" So. So uh, we we were struck out struck out by Guam three times, and we said, okay, that's fine. Uh, 
it, it gave us impetus to look else uh, uh, for a different direction, a different option. Um, okay. Now, that's good. Okay, when we come in Commonwealth, uh, you know, I talked a lot about about this issue with with uh, Ed Pangilinan. Ed Pangilinan is still around. He's in Maryland, and I said, "What do you think of the Covenant?" Still in, in yeah. good spirit. Absolutely. You know, I like Ed Pangilinan's view about the Covenant. It, it is not perfect. We have issues. We disagree on different issues, like like the uh, uh, self government issue. We disagree about the application of federal laws here. Uh, we disagree on, on the application of the territorial clause. But, it, you know, uh, uh, according to Ed, Ed looks at it as uh, this is a relationship that opens up great opportunities for the people of Germany. Students, anybody, can go to the US. Our kids can go to any universities they want to. Which, and, and these are opportunities for us, for them to be educated. And we are U.S. citizens. And we are U.S. citizens. We can go to the mainland, um, work there, seek uh, any kind of job. We can visit there. We can uh, enlist in the, in the service academies. Uh, we can buy land. We can own land there in fee simple. But the folks from the U.S. mainland cannot come here and, and, and buy land uh, fee simple. Because of the prohibition, why can, but, why can so we, these, these are he looks at it as a, a, this relationship as something that opens up endless opportunities. It's a working relationship. So that man, endless amend, no? for our people, and we, we can amend the uh, relationship. Add on is that, is that what your idea or Ed's idea? The relationship as yes opens up other opportunities. Are, are, are up, uh, huge opportunities. Can we people. can we negotiate to vote for president? How come that one is not included? I mean, that, you know, that, yeah, that, most of the benefits are benefiting that, that's us. That's a constitutional uh, issue. Let, let me just, you know, uh, we, uh, there, there was a, an, an, uh, an effort between Adele Kalili and, and uh, San Nicolas Aruguam to, to see if we can get yeah. somebody to, sitting in the Senate to be represented in the Senate by the territories. Uh, I love the idea because it puts us at the table with, with others. But here's Puerto Rico who's been trying to get something for the last, uh, I don't know how many years, and they have a population of about six million people, or five, six million. Washington, D.C., over you know, a, a million and a half people. D.C. has been trying to, to get, D.C.'s delegate is the same status as the cinema in Guam. They don't vote on the floor. Uh, you know, they, they can vote in committee, yeah. but, uh, and, and vote in committee, but cannot vote on the floor. So, so that's why it's hard for them to, to, to it's trade. It's difficult with, uh, to accomplish. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, Puerto Rico with 6 million people, uh, Washington DC with at least 1.5, uh, the best thing that they can get is, is, uh, a delegate group similar to us. So, so for us to to um, try and get a, a vote or somebody, you know, like a delegate status in the in the Senate, it's going to be a, a, an uphill battle. Okay. But it's something that you know it's not. Gough, I'll give you a time, but yeah. let me get uh, let me get the Q and A started. Sure, sure. So we can uh, we have a caller on the line. Buenas, Iku Raman Mariana Segupa. Yes, just your name, please, and uh, then we can get you on the air. You have a question for the governor? Okay, reduce your background music, your background uh, radio, please, and uh, make it quick. Go ahead. You remember, I tell you, remember the time? Okay, go ahead. What's your question for governor about that? You remember that? What is your question for the governor? Is that your question for Governor Babauta? Yes. Uh, why did why did they demolish the building in Lower Base? Yeah, because they are they built the Democrat. 
The Democrat? Who who's the Democrat? Uh, Which building did they demolish? Uh, I don't understand your question. Oh, and then why did they demolish it? And now they're renting. No, that was your question before. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if uh, the governor can answer that question. Thank you. Huh? Okay, before the, they said uh, there's a building in Lower Base, the CUC. He, the question was posed last week. Uh, he's asking you, if, why did they demolish the, why did they demolish the building? By, I don't know. By Fairlawn, by former governor. <clears throat> no who, comment? Who demolished the building? <clears throat> they said, he was asking them. They demolished the building, the, the CUC building in Lower Base. And now they're renting. See, since renting, that was the, the question of when we brought up the issue about the rising cost of operation. Right? So he brought that issue up. I, I remember that. So he's asking you. Well, any comment on that? Or you have no uh, I, I, idea? I, I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I, but, I have no information on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that question. Uh, we don't know the answer to that caller's question about why they demolished the former CUC building, lower base, and now they're renting. Yeah. Uh, maybe because you are the former governor, the things that you have to answer. Well, you know. <coughs> okay. Uh, okay, well, that's who is in the Senator Singh. Buenas, Senator. Uh, hold on, hold on, okay, go ahead. Governor? Yes, Senator. Uh, buenas, Senator. Buenas, Yes. Yes, yes, uh huh. Uh, it, it the list time, right? The West Okay. Yeah, I'm listening, you, Senator. Okay. Okay. Center, uh, uh, you know, if I'm if I'm uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, I know uh, Adrian uh, went to the Air Force Academy. The, he became a, a helicopter pilot. Uh, he graduated second lieutenant. Uh, he must be something else. Uh, I don't know higher no rank. Uh, what I heard is that uh, you know he he he's getting ready for retirement. The, uh, well, that was a really uh, I, I commend him. I'm very proud of him, the family, and every you know everybody associated with him, because he can demonstrate. He demonstrated that uh, anybody coming out of the cinema can do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's Still, I eh, still I part of my and I and I interview and I see see Adrian no, 
uh, 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 he he had uh, uh, in the back of his uh, head no uh, a pony a, a rat tail uh, a rat tail and of course after running there is a and at all there is a gokurdini rubber band so sorry there is even no I have to tell you that uh, you know if you really sign up for if you sign up for the academy that rat tail has to go <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 yeah uh, all right yeah. okay thank you okay thank you senator all right response it hello no relax that the fancy you more than me Ah? Talifan? Talifan waktu tak? Nunca juga. Okay. Dengar, dengar, dengar roh tuak. Dengar roh tuak. Selur roh tuak. Talufan. Di di tahu hukum mesti celutan no mana orang tengah lom. Tidak ada saya ikut seluruh lo. Okay, ni kita pakai. Go ahead. Okay, ni lom lo question ni lo lo tanya tanya lo. Apa nak cemas tu sini dia lo. Tama man lo 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 tanya tu tak. Ini kita saya ikut lo sini aku bungkuk pati ni. Luta pan Guam pan Amerika pan mana lo tu. Di tadi sini ni lo lo lapar tu i terus jadi apa tadi sini tu. Okay, thank you. Nenon aku. Thank you. All right. Apa nak tajam tu? Kiman mama mana? Tengok plan tu. Apa nak kima? Well, yeah, yeah. It's a matter of no resources, man. No, I I think it's about time that Maori can have an idea, in my opinion, because we can fly in goods from anywhere. The, you know, just we have to kind of cost out the cost benefit. You know, man. No. Flying, buying an air, uh, air, uh, uh, aircraft, manning it, uh, hiring a pilot, and, and uh, uh, the, the cost of fuel. Uh, we have to maximize the. Uh, we have to really kind of see the the cost benefit to it, uh, and, and if we can do that to our advantage, that would be the way to go. All right. Thank you, Governor. Nena, for the orders. That's the most important. Most professional. We'll be now. You want to talk on summary, sir? So okay. December By January, there's going to be a new administration, mm -hmm. a 50th administration. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. We brought in, uh, we brought in, uh, what do you call this? Uh, an investor from the US to establish a long line fishing. I was the mm -hmm. acting director, uh, director of uh, economic development and commerce, yeah? and I brought him over to your office. Mm -hmm. You remember that? No. no okay. One thing sure. that I admire you, man, Governor, when I brought in Courtney. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. Courtney. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you said, Glenn, I'm. I'll yield to the next administration. But I support a long line fishing. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And you allowed the new administration to come in. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, uh, when 
that former governor came in, see, Governor Pitkill. The, there's no fish here in the Commonwealth. So we eventually uh, didn't get the support from the administration. Um, but later on, there is fish. <laughs> yeah, there's fish. So later on, I, I had to, because I wasn't in that administration, I had to resign. And I joined uh, Courtney. So we opened a uh, long line fishing. Right, right. I remember that? So I started that long line fishing with him. because, But it wasn't supposed to be me. It was supposed to be the government with the investor. Yeah, but since that administration didn't support, yeah, uh, I had to to okay. risk everything that I have. They opened up a freezer in, in Rhode Island, and, and you know, just uh, something that that uh, was uh, out of the box uh, yeah. kind of thinking, which is really good. Yeah. And then you know, I'm just uh, you know, I just want to salute you for that. Uh, you, you know, you opened uh, an opportunity too, and that was in your administration when we start to. Invite people out from outside, right? Yeah. To bring in. Uh, okay, so that was. I just want to get that across. Yeah. I want you to have your summary before we close. Go ahead. This is your last uh, segment now. Um, I then I'm just so thankful to be able to share some of the ideas about the, our relationship with uh, the uh, the U.S. Uh, under the covenant and. Uh, um, Okay, how this book can be taught in school? Can can is there a way that we can have the, the, the books uh, your books uh, being introduced in high school? Well, uh, I don't know if you remember this guy, uh, Courtney Jeske. Uh -huh. He was a teacher at uh, Morales High School. Okay. He, in fact, he taught Morales uh, in my history. Like, yeah, I, uh, he read the book, and, okay. and I, I, I want to quote him saying this. This book is well-informed and well-written, according to Jessica, the, this uh, NMI instructor at uh, uh, Moran's High School. This book is an excellent history lesson between the relationship of the United States of America and the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. I, a highly recommended factual book, a must-read. Mm -hmm. So. It's coming from a teacher from Morales High School, and and I think you know uh, maybe the uh, board of education should have uh, get a copy, look at it, and and maybe read it, introduce it, not to the read school. it, and, and see where, yeah. where they can fit it in to uh, uh, the uh, curriculum program at, at the high school and even at the North Morales College. All right, and by the way, Courtney, Courtney was my partner. Remember in the oh the yeah yeah. Because he started, we, we brought him here and we started the business. And yeah. then, when when the when the, when there was a problem with the new new uh, uh, investors, because yeah. they, they had to buy into the company, we move out. And then, you know, me and Courtney was, was taken out through the lawsuit. Right? Uh, I see. But uh, there yeah. was more to that than what meets the eye. Okay. So, but that was Courtney's. Uh, Plan is after that he joined the school, being a teacher as yeah. a high school teacher. I see. Okay, but anyway, that's it. Anything else, uh, Alan? That's the end of our cultural program. Para tulong sa mga naman eko, mga man malipa na siya man halo mamsu di survey monkey para in evaluate a program. I the half of my percent tapago. Yaya yung marana sa gupa. Uh, cultural show na segment di Facebook, di ya loki di YouTube, di sinya loki man saw nam zun and in answer di siya question di uh, man ma pasadista pa pa di survey monkey. Alright? Governor, thank you. Nain di ya pago. The simple, tapan abingan mo na, talo gin in i i nendon na tibo, i si les, yan loki si si doro na tulo si grupo si zumus mo si governor. Thank you. Just want to look at the right. Okay. Any music there? Okay, we're out. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Ah, si Jules Mossy, talo tutulo do si Maneko, wili ki pugaman Mariana sa gupa, gini ni historia. Ipugaman Mariana Sagupa, si Mariana Iglesias, Jules Mosse, 
Hindi na umawag may si Tuta sa Leather Singh. Hindi na umawag siya talo. Wahat sa kinya si Tuta si Tolo Caprera. Tawasin siya sa din muna sa Tolo. Manita din na ginagawa ng Marera sa Gupa. Nanay, undaw ko na sa Lugo pa rin si Tata. Ini di cultural program di Cuba Governor Juan Lecay de Bauta, di Historia, di halang nus pabu na sabun. Nus masih tahu di inhabit nus si Alan Castro, wahus si Glenis Magloria inakwaja, inapa pabu di dampas para kudo nus samso. Adios, estau tu sabun nus si Jus masih. Okay. Lain ni gak, thank you non, no. Aku tu lain mas, thank you, terus mas. Ista, pusing pi eh, tapi si Francis yang ada mana? Okay, alright. Jadi okay, pusing pi dia mango ni pun pick up di tunggu ni. Okay, okay. Ista. Buenas, buenas, selesa. Lain ni sedikit, oh sedikit, mana sah di lagi tak tiri ngah, hold on. No. Sí, señor, sí. Buenas, buenas.